We mentioned Edmonton, so let's take a look at what is going on oh, in boy. Edmonton right now. And the yeah, the sky is falling. We do have a tweet or an X or whatever we're calling it these days. But take a look at this. The Oilers goaltender Jack Campbell has been placed on waivers for the purpose of assignments. Reader, what do we make of that? Where is this situation heading? Well, uh, this is unfortunate because first of all, Jack Campbell is a great teammate. Uh, everybody loves Jack. The, uh, he was in Toronto. He's been in L.A. Wherever he's been, Dallas, they absolutely love the guy. He's a tremendous teammate. And this is unfortunate because his game, his career is kind of a roller coaster up and down. And right now he's, he's back on the downslope. And the team's losing. The team isn't playing well in front of him. Uh, he is not playing up to his capabilities. And when that happens... Um, you know, your, your contract doesn't save you to keep you in the National Hockey League. And unfortunately for Jack Campbell, uh, who, you know, just as a, what, five, is it about a $5 million cap hit? $5 million, five-year contract signed it last year in the yeah. offseason. So it's he's not saving. the second season yeah. of a five-year, $25 million deal, $5 million per season. So there's two, there's two ways you look at this. The team's not playing well in front of them. Defensively, this team has always struggled. And we've, how long have we discussed goalies on this team? And that, this is a huge number to send to the American League and have to eat the contract or parts of it. I'm not a capologist, so I don't know exactly how much they're eating. But also, the, 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 the issue here is, is the Edmonton Oilers are still in need of a goaltender. Yeah. Like, wh wh what do you do now? Like you, 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 you've got to find someone. So your thing is someone. So you've got to find someone to bring and in. And secondary the scoring and defensive yeah. depth. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's it, this is an absolute nightmare. I mean, it, it, this kind of this this kind of reminds me of when I played, and you were, uh, you know, the team was struggling. And guess guess who they changed? The third and fourth line. Top lines, you're not scoring goals. Power play's not working. Ah, we're gonna call up a player. We're gonna bring him up. The third liner's gonna be sitting in the stands, and you're like. You know, th there's more problems in Edmonton right yeah. now than goaltending. Yeah. Put it that way. And then Jack's not the scapegoat here. This could be a great thing for Jack Campbell. It, it, he can go down to the American Hockey League. He can find his game again. He can get his confidence back. He can come back and, and he can show everybody that he's still capable of playing in the National Hockey League. We've seen it before. Goaltenders have done it before. Hopefully th this is the case with Jack Campbell. But for Edmonton, for Edmonton, this is just another season of a saga of... Okay, is, is goaltending going to be the Achilles heel that's going to keep us uh, from reaching our ultimate goal? It's one of several problems that they have, and really the reason they were to, to send him down is to try to create some cap room maybe to address some of the other issues to open up some space to make that happen. Everybody's tight against the cap. I mean, the Oilers, think about what they've been dealing with this season. They've had to play short in games at least twice and maybe more 17 skaters instead of 18 because of the cap issues they've had. So these are challenges for them. They hope to bring up uh, Cal Pickard from the uh, from from Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. He is playing very well in Bakersfield. Maybe he can be like a little bit of a lightning in a bottle yep. to help them in goal. But they've got to clean up a whole host of other issues as well. So uh, Jack Campbell, we'll see how things play out for him. But, uh, you know, maybe he'll get claimed. I doubt it. But, uh, you know. Like, Stuart Skinner's numbers aren't much better. No, they're not. Like, so, so it's not as though Jack Campbell is the issue. But Jack Campbell's making issue. more money. That's, no, that's I, I, why I get it. And, yeah. and it, and it's unfortunate. But, and it's a kind of a combination of things. But uh, the, there, there's more to it. I mean, you and I were up in, yep. in, in Edmond doing the Outdoor uh, Heritage Classic. Uh, and Edmonton came out flying in the first period. They looked good that day. They looked great for <laughs> yeah. the first period. They dominated. Yeah. And the second period, it wasn't so much. Because it, under pressure, there were a lot of turnovers. There were a lot of mistakes. Mistakes, and there was Stuart Skinner who was rescuing them at times in the second period. The first period, it was all Edmonton. And uh, in the second period, we saw some of those mistakes yeah. creeping back into their game. This is, you know, and th this is a team that's, you know, is, hasn't figured it all out yet. And, you know, the, it's a wake up call to everybody in that room because Jack Campbell is a very well liked teammate. And when you take a player like that out of your lineup because you're not playing well in front of him and he's not on top of his game, it's a big wake-up call for a very close team. You know what? I'll tell you one thing about Jack Campbell. And I watched this several years, a couple years back, the Leafs, they did it. Amazon, I believe, did a special the whole season with Leafs, all or nothing. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being a five-part series. And it was really well done. And there was a couple of things I took out of it. And one of the things was Jack Campbell's demeanor. He is, to your point, a really nice guy. Yeah. His teammates really like him. But he wears it. When he doesn't play well, he wears it in the room. And I think because he's so well-liked, other players start thinking about Jack Campbell and his challenges 
and less about the things they have to do. I, I, it was something that struck me, and like you've played with Patrick Waugh, Eddie Belfour, those guys, they had a little harder edge. It wasn't going to yes. be their fault a lot of nights, right? And so I felt like Jack Campbell, because he is such a really good person, and he does wear it so much in the room, it's almost a distraction when he's not playing well. Reason to send him down. Interesting. I mean, interesting point. I mean, like I said, yeah. you played with Wah. You no, played yeah, with Belfour. I... Those guys, they didn't wear it. They moved on. Yep. Yeah. You know, that's that's what I took of that show, and I'm sure he hasn't changed. And no, I, I doubt it. But I think I think that's what that, that, that his teammates liked about him is yeah. that, that he took accountability and responsibility for his his own play, whereas a lot of guys would be ah, that's okay. I'll get it tomorrow. You know, and and I'd rather be with a guy like that. Who is more concerned about the way that his poor play? And you know what? I you won two hey, I play, with Eddie and I, I know Patrick. I did. I, but I, I also play. With, I also play with Joe Sackick, who yeah. who was you know wasn't scoring and is out there you know half an hour after practice with Brian Trotcher working on a yeah. shot. He's not scoring, and you can tell he's mad at himself daily because he's not scoring and he's not helping the team win. Kind of a similar situation, you know, superstar player and sacking and a Hall of Famer, but it's a similar situation. Like, got, you want to be on a team with guys who care, and when they're not performing the way they should perform individually, that, you know, that, that's okay to wear it a little bit. It's okay to walk around grumpy a or little mad bit. Or, a little bit. He doesn't, but yeah. he wasn't, he's not mad. Is That's what I recognized. He just really feels bad, and he feels terrible, and he's almost, you know, a couple of occasions he was in tears. And... I feel for that. I never played at the highest level. I could understand. I'm, you know, we watch games from afar. But at the end of the day, if you're in that room, you're in it together. Like, I just felt it was like, boy, he's such a likable guy, and he's so down about not playing well, it becomes a distraction for others around him. That was my only takeaway. I really thought he was a great person. But it did make me yeah. wonder about how that it, what's that impact in the room. But like we said, yeah. this isn't just a Jack Campbell issue no, in Edmonton. No. It's it's Jack Campbell, it's Stuart Skinner, it's yeah. everybody else playing in front of them. It's on the bench right now. It's up and down that yeah. organization. Yeah. The latest miscue last night, 6-2 loss against Vancouver. They've now lost three times against Vancouver already this season. Yeah. There was a specific play in that game that you saw, a high-risk play in a situation di that didn't call for a high-risk play. Yeah, and it's, it's Bouchard on the blue line. Who, who takes a, a, a risk that I don't think he had to take at this point of the game. And we're going to show you the, the tape and kind of take a look at it here. Now, you can see there he is on the right point. And, uh, you know, Evan Bouchard, the puck is going to come here, and we're going to stop it, like, right in here. Now, look at the time of this game, Dave. You know about game management, right? It's a 3-2 to two game. Edmonton is doing well. They're out shooting Van. It's a tight game. It's a half a game to play. Bouchard is there. There's the player holding there. He's, got, he's coming. He attacks here when he doesn't have support. He doesn't. In fact, I think Fogel is Fogel here. He's on one knee. Back out a little bit. Create space. Instead, he attacks. Now it's a two-on-one the other way. And here he is. He's straight leg coming back. He hustles to the blue line, but then he stops. And it's only a matter of, of inches. And now he can't get there. If he had kept his feet moving, you're going to see a better look at it from here. Here he comes. He's moving. He's moving. He's moving. Now he stops moving. The puck doesn't bounce for him. And when things are going bad, Dave, that's what happens. So for me, Bouchard didn't understand the situation well. And this is not something new for Evan Bouchard. I mean, he's a terrific offensive defenseman, but he doesn't defend well. That's a bad decision at that moment of the game. Yeah. And then you got to bust it to get back and get your guy. He leaves him there. And then to make matters worse, you know how it is. We were just up there. The media, they're on these guys. They asked the coach after the game. is like, you know, he didn't miss a shift after that. Pretty big mistake. Like, is there any accountability here? And then Jay Woodcroft's kind of hemming and hawing. But at the end of the day, maybe there should be accountability. Maybe after you make a mistake like that, you got to sit down for a while. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. Um, that was a... <clears throat> the, the only... It, it, it's difficult. Not, you know, I, I don't microscope watch the Edmonton Otters. Yeah. Uh, so just to say a player makes that mistake, and that's a decision. And, and the decision is, if the coaching staff is saying, guys, we want to put pressure in the neutral zone, we want to close the gap, he's trying to close the gap. Uh, he's expecting his forwards to get back a little bit. He's, he's trying to put pressure on it. And if the coaching staff, the message is, let's close gaps, let's get up, let's be aggressive on the play, and until the coaching staff says, guys, we've got to pull back. No pinching. 
unless you are 100% sure you got the puck. No pinching whatsoever. Not the man, yeah. the puck. So it all depends what the message is. If the me if, if, and, and Jay Woodcroft's not going to come out afterwards and say, you know, he, he's not going to start giving game plans and specifics on things. Usually he's going to bite at the bullet and he's going to say, you know what, I, I take this one, I take responsibility. So if the message from the coaching staff was to get up and pinch, and he pinched, well, how do you, like, how do you sit him? His message after the game and, and when he was asked was, like, he could do a lot better there. So, I mean, you know. Yeah, but, it, but you it's, play, I know it's a decision. It's yeah. a decision making. So yeah. now you've got to decide of the decisions that Evan Bouchard has made over the, the course of the season so yeah. far. And, and over those games, his decision making, is his decision being good in positions or bad? I mean, the analytics are all out there. So I'm sure every team's got it. And that's where they have to decide. Yeah. You're making bad decisions. You need to sit down. And if they feel, you know what, he's been making, he made six good decisions in a row, made six really good plays, and there, it's like, wow. You know, and he does bring a lot of offense to this team. Uh, so you do want to maybe get him back out there to create it. But it, uh, it's easy to say, sit the guy for making the mistake. And I don't disagree yeah. with you because accountability is huge. If, if you don't have accountability amongst the players and from the coach to the players and, and the players to the coach, then, then you, your team is, 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 is going to lose. And, and I won championships with teams that we were accountable to ourselves, to our line mates, to our defense partners. To like, it, it was microscopic the way it went through the lineup, and as far as where your accountability lies. And eventually, your accountability is to the full team. But if you are, if you're going to say as a, as a coach, it's like, you know, we want you to do that. Um, it's I don't know the ins and outs yeah. of this, so it's easy to say, ah, sit him, sit him. Well, yeah. you know what? Maybe maybe the team's like, wow, he's been playing really good. He made one mistake. You know, I've seen Ray Bork coming around in front of the net and cough it up when we get yeah. scored on, and then the next couple shifts he goes out there and creates three great scoring chances. And next thing you know, he's out there getting an assist and a goal, and you win the game. And he scores the game winner. So what, where's the accountability? Well, if you had him on the bench, he wouldn't have been able to do that because no. he made that one mistake. But he does so many good things. So again, these are things that it's easy to say. Ray and Bork? I, hey, I agree with no. Evan Bouchard. Okay. All right, I Ray agree with Bork? you. <laughs> All right, I agree with you 100. percent I agree with you 100 percent right. on the play. It was a bad time to pinch. Yeah. You're halfway through the game. There's no need to pinch. You, sh you should realize that your teammate's down. He's not going to be able to recover fast enough. There's no need to yeah. pinch. But he was already moving up. Yeah. That was a bad decision. No yeah. question about it. The back check. Now, that is yeah. an offense that is not acceptable. Yeah. That is a work ethic offense. Yeah. Like, when you stop skating on a back check, like, you should be back checking after you get burned on a play like that. You should be coming in, and when that rebound comes out, the closest guy, you're throwing him into the boards and, and getting rid of him. You're not looking up going, hmm, where's the puck going to go? And then, then reacting? Like, that, to me, is a work ethic problem, and that is not an Evan Bouchard problem. To me, that's a work ethic problem amongst the team when you don't back check hard enough on a play after you made a mistake.